Hello. Welcome to my midlife crisis. This right here is my workshop and it has turned into my hoarding hole. So it was time to clean it all out and redo this workshop from top to bottom. I had just thrown a Halloween party when I started making this video so everything that was in that barn you saw in the background had gotten moved into this garage and my workshop had just been overtaken with junk. I walked all this shit down to the end of my driveway and left it by the side of the road and within a week it was all gone. I was so happy to see it all go but honestly I was able to do this project for less than $100 because of all the hoarding I've done in the past. The only things I had to buy for this project were paint and furring strips and if I had planned a little better and known how much black paint I was going to need this project would have cost me way less. I ended up spending a ton of money on black paint because I kept buying spray paint at first because I didn't think I was going to paint much. Then I bought Rust-Oleum little cans for $17 each. Then after that I finally went and bought a gallon of paint and in the end I think I spent like $70 on paint when really I probably could have just spent $25. Once I had all this shit out of my shop, it was time to start taking everything down off the walls. I'll be saving all these shelves that I take down so I can make more shelves and put them back up on the wall. Trying to get this thing onto the back wall by myself was a really stupid decision. It almost fell on my head multiple times, but I eventually got it to rest on that 2x4 and I was able to climb up the ladder and screw it to the wall. I slid the second tall can that I had into the spot where it was going to go and I screwed that to the wall as well. Thank you Jesse for the tall cabinets. Then it was time to take this entire old workbench apart. I stacked up all the wood that I had from that workbench, then decided to make another new outfeed table slash workbench that was going to fit around that tool cabinet you just saw. That tool cabinet I also got off the side of the road for free. I deliver mail as my regular job, so anytime I see stuff out of my route that looks halfway decent, I grab it and throw it in the mail truck. The people on my route probably think I'm a dirtbag loser picking through their garbage, and pretty sure they're right. I used half lap joints and three inch screws to build the frame for this workbench and then covered the frame with plywood scraps that I also had gotten out of the trash. I made these simple cabinet doors for the front of the workbench using plywood that I covered with a herringbone pattern cut out from an old headboard I found. That's right, in the trash. I'm going to be doing herringbone pattern all over my shop so I won't go into details with all these doors but I will later in the video with another cabinet door I'm doing. Hmm. I wonder why they call it herringbone. And I know it's because of the bones of a herring fish look like that pattern, but what made him choose a herring? Flounder bone? No, that's not good. I love the sardine bone pattern you did on the top of that coffee table. What? No, also not good. Hey, check out the large mouth bass bone I did on my floor. I gave my wife a cod bone sweater for Christmas. Why does that sound sexual? Anchovy bone? Anchovy bone? Yeah. You know what? That's it. I'm going with anchovy bone. Anyway, I couldn't find a big enough piece of plywood to cover the entire top of this workbench, so I decided to use multiple pieces. And, to make it look like it was on purpose, I put one side on hinges and made it so it would flip up and I could store things underneath it in this little box. After that was done, I did a quick sand of the top, then it was time to put the cabinet doors on with the anchovy bone pattern. With that, this workbench was done. Storage for writing utensils under the top, room for a rolling toolbox, cabinets to hide my unmentionables, and the whole thing doubles as an outfeed table for my table saw. Alright, moving on. I took some scrap wood left over from the workbench and started piecing together a trunk to store larger tools in. You ever slip off of the screw and stab yourself right in the hand? Kinda like that. Mother! Right through the fingernail. Somewhere along the line, I lost a bunch of the footage of me making this trunk, but basically all I did was screw these three frames together and then screw them to the wall. And then I covered them with a couple sheets of plywood. And once the whole thing was covered in plywood, I cut out more anchovy bone pattern pieces and covered the whole thing with that. I put black molding around the whole thing and then I used an old tabletop I found on the side of the road for the top of this trunk. And there we go. Ta-da! 
I'm flying through this project, so if there's more information you're looking for on a specific part of this project, just leave a message in the comments and I'll make sure to ignore it. Now remember those shelves I took off the wall earlier? Well, I'm going to be using those shelves to build more shelves. Now instead of covering them with a trash hoard, I'm going to be covering them with a more stylish trash hoard. VHS tapes! Remember VHS? Going to your local rental store and walking around looking for something new to rent. But instead of renting something new, you walked out with Predator or some slasher film you've seen a hundred times. Ha, ah, the good old days. Anyway, I decided to bring that feeling into the comfort of my own home. I guess that's what the streaming services were doing. Fuck. But the streaming services don't offer you that old Sony Trinitron TV and that classic VHS look. So yeah, I think I made the right decision. <laughs> I built a cart to hold that old Sony Trinitron TV in my last video about a month ago. And if you want to check that out, it'll be like right here somewhere, the link to it. Or you know what? Why don't you wait till the end of the video, then go watch that one. So I'm building this shelf to hold all my VHS tapes that I have also collected for mostly free. I did pay for some of them, but I'm not counting that towards the cost of the workshop because most people aren't going to fill their shelves with VHS tapes. I cut these boards to a four inch depth and then just started piecing them together in random spots. I wanted this shelf to be really random because I have a lot of different size horror knickknack thingies. I don't know what to call them. I cut, screwed, glued, and pin nailed all of this together. And then when I was done, I brought it outside and gave it a coat of spray paint. Once I had the whole thing painted, I brought it inside and I was able to hang it up with some L brackets. I filled it up with some movies and some other bullshit and voila. I fucking love this shelf for some reason. It feels so much like an old video rental store or something to me. I'm not even sure what it feels like, but I love it. I'm so happy I made it. And uh, it fits right in with my midlife crisis. Honestly, I kind of wish I could take all the tools out of this workshop and just make this entire room like a video rental store. And someday, if I have enough money, I might do just that and make myself another workshop next door. All right, let's move on. We're gonna make a cabinet door for that long cabinet up above that I had hung earlier and almost fell on my head. I did the same thing with the anchovy bone pattern, gave it a quick sand, and then built a black frame to go around the whole thing. I screwed hinges to the bottom of this and screwed them to the bottom of the shelf itself, put a clip on the top of the shelf so that I could open this down, take my tools out, and then close it back up. I'm gonna need a ladder to get to this, which is slightly annoying, but I think it's worth it in the long run to make this whole workshop look a little nicer. There's the furry strips I bought at Home Depot. I think I paid $15 for a big like pack of them. Brought them down to my basement, painted them all black with one big wide roller, because I decided I was gonna cover all the plywood seams in my workshop with these I lined them up on the seams, got them level, and then just brand nailed them right to the wall. No glue, nothing like that. Just kept it simple. Did the same thing for frames around my windows, and then I did the same thing for frames around my doors. This was the easiest part of this entire project, but I think it really just made everything look a little nicer in here. All right, right now I'm cutting out all the slats for the anchovy bones. It's gonna be the cabinet over here in my workshop. It's a tall, narrow cabinet. And before I finished this cabinet door, I decided I would paint all the stuff on the back wall black. And then once I did that, I said, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll paint some boards and hang them up on the back wall. Every time I thought I was almost done with this project, I'd get the idea to do something else. And I just kept going and going and going. And that's why it's taking me so long to put out this video. My apologies. Anyway, there I am just nailing all these random boards to the back wall. I put a little shelf there, put my uh, Jason and my Freddy up on the shelf, hung a little light above them, and now I'm back to doing some more anchovy bone. All right, so to do this pattern, I would first take my speed square and draw a 45 degree angle line meeting right in the center of my cabinet door. After that, I'd spread glue all over, then nail my first boards in the anchovy bone pattern, and then I could line up a whole bunch of them against that board, knowing that it was nailed in place and it wasn't going to move. Then I went back, nailed them all on. 
I'd let them all hang over on the side and then cut them off afterwards with my circular saw. And there you go. Look at that anchovy bone pattern. Here I am making another frame. We can skim through this quickly, right people? We've seen a lot of this shit. If you want to see how I made these frames, actually, go back and watch my frame video. There you go. I screwed that onto the front of that cabinet door and then I just attached this cabinet door on the top and then I decided to just do another thing. I don't know why I kept adding to this, but I decided I wanted to do sections of the wall that were black like the back wall was to my workshop. I had a lot of plywood scraps laying around, like a ton of plywood scraps. So I started cutting them to width, then I started cutting them to random lengths, and I started doing that wall. Now, I'm making a platform right here for a space heater that I, again, found on the side of the road. This space heater has a flame effect on the front of it, and I thought, you know, what goes better was sitting down and watching a movie than a little fireplace, huh? Fireplace, cold beer, VHS, can't go wrong. What a fucking loser. I had a lot of scraps laying around that I just built all around this space heater. I made it so that the space heater can come out because I have a feeling that this is gonna either die or I'm just gonna decide I don't really like having it there. And when I take that out, I'll just make a cabinet door for the front and I can use it for storage. And on the top, I put a big drawer. And on the very top of all this, another piece of a maple tabletop that I got off the side of the road. So once this was all done, I was happy with the way it looked. I decided that I can't just have one spot in the shop that's got a black wall, so I had to do two accent walls. And once I decided to do those two accent walls, which we will just skip through really fast because there's no reason to show you all this, I decided they each need a poster. So I ordered some posters offline. I got Halloween 3, a classic, Friday the 13th, also a classic, and The Thing, another classic. All my electrical is in conduit on the outside of the wall, so I painted all of that conduit black. And then this workshop is pretty much done. Oh, and I did cool lighting on the ceiling. I had these lights I had gotten for our Halloween party that you can adjust on your phone. I'll actually leave a link in the description of the lights I use. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will be back to regular videos now that I have my shop all ready to go. And I'll see you in the next one. Dear President of RCA Columbia Pictures Home Entertainment Headquarters, Hello, my name is Nicholas DiMartino. I have a few simple questions I was hoping to get your input on. As you've probably noticed, VHS tapes have dropped significantly in popularity in the past 10 to 20 years. I've spotted your company name on a lot of my favorite tapes, including, but not limited to, The Shining, Halloween 4, and Night of the Living Dead. I find it hard to believe this is a coincidence. So, with that being said, do you think you could send me a bunch of old horror and action VHS tapes you have in a storage closet or whatever? I'd be sure to put in a good word for you with all of my friends to help assure some more sales. I wouldn't ask, but my tapes are starting to fall apart from excessive use, and I love the look of VHS. Second, do you guys need anyone to be in a movie? I'll include a photo. I could probably do action, drama, or horror pretty well. I live a highly adventurous life and have a lot of real life experience with these genres. I'm sure I could channel that. Also, I cry a lot. so. I bet I could drum up some tears on the spot if necessary. I'll start practicing now, just in case. Thanks in advance for the tapes and the opportunity to show off my acting chops. Your future star, Nicholas DiMartino. P.S. To see me in action, search for Die Trying DIY on YouTube. P.S.S. Sorry, my printer ran out of ink, so I had to draw my face, but you get it. Bye, see you again, and have a good dream.